It is often particularly difficult to move on after being with a narcissist or once you realize you are with a narcissist because of something really strange, which is we don't actually know what is really true. In this video, I will share with you five simple sentences you can add to many observations or many beliefs you have, which will help create a little bit of space and help you reconsider what actually is true. And I call these gaslight snuffers because they help us put out the effects of the gaslighting. And we'll start with two very simple observations. First of all, narcissists lie. And we're not talking about lying about small things or white lies. We're talking about lying about important questions that would actually change a lot about the relationship if you knew about them. These are people who might be lying about their income, lying about their past, even lying about their real name, lying about their nationality, lying about their studies. These are not insignificant lies. And if you come across any of these, it's a big red flag that simply, and this is the second one, if they lied about this, it is not impossible that they lied about something else. Remember this, if someone has been lying about their name, about their nationality, about their age, it is not impossible they're lying about other things that are equally important. It doesn't mean for sure that they are, it simply raises the question and means we can't be sure that they are not. With this in mind, let's look at the five sentences you can add to pretty much any statement you believe to be true in order to simply raise a little bit of healthy doubt and ungaslight yourself in the process. Number five is the shortest one. Simply add the word allegedly to anything they have stated to be true. They say they went to this university. Well, allegedly they went to this university. They say that their mother lives in this other country. Allegedly she lives in this other country. Regardless of what they say, add allegedly. Their ex broke up with them because the ex was jealous. Allegedly, the ex broke up with them because allegedly the ex was jealous and allegedly this ex even actually existed. You don't know any of this for sure. You simply heard it from this person. Number four, simply add, I don't know if it's true. Their ex broke up with them because they were jealous. I don't know if it's true. They divorced their ex because of something the ex did. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if they divorced the ex because of something the ex did. I don't know if the ex even exists. I don't know if they even were married. I don't know. I do not know if it's true. Note with this, we are not saying that it is false. We are simply highlighting that we do not know that it is true. And there's a big difference. And mind you, of course, all of these sentences, they are for you in your head. They are not something to be sharing with the toxic person or with the narcissist. The goal is not to argue with a pig. The goal is simply to create more space in your own head to avoid going crazy. It's not going out there trying to argue with them or get them to reassure you. It is for you to create space in which you can figure out what you do know and what you're not sure about. And you are the person who can determine if you're sure about something or if you are not sure about something. Number three, add the sentence, so they claim. They were a partner in this firm that did this enterprise, so they claim. They were victims in a car accident because of something someone else did, so they claim. You don't know if the accident was because of someone else or was because of them, and you don't even know if the accident happened. One person whom I mentioned sometimes, the Maldivian con man, claimed to have been in a car accident in which he was sent to the hospital. His best friend was killed in front of him. And it turned out that he had no scars on his body. It turned out that this best friend didn't even exist but he used this as a way to explain his erratic behavior and his trauma. All of this was fabricated. He made many claims and we had no idea if they were true or not. And most of them were not true. Number two, very simple, simply add maybe, maybe not. This person got promoted to this position. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know if they were promoted. We don't know if they had the position. We don't know if the company exists. And even if it does exist, we don't know if they worked there. And if they did work there, we don't know if they had the position. And we don't know if what they are portraying is true. Maybe it's true. Maybe it isn't true. 
maybe, maybe not, instills a little bit of doubt and uncertainty. And this is accurate. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. The key point is, you don't know. You don't have enough proof to know either way if it is true or not true. And this can avoid falling into the trap of thinking, it must be true, or I must find proof that it is not true. That is not the case. You don't have to find proof that it is not true. It is often enough to remember, maybe it's true, maybe it's not true, and you don't know. And this leads us to number one. Just add the sentence, I have not yet seen proof. The Moldavian con man claimed to have a degree from a university, and he was very good at triangulating in the sense he would tell one person some information, wait for that person to relay the information to someone else. So we all assumed that the information was true because we heard it from someone else. We heard it, but we never actually saw it. In this case, it turned out that the course that he claimed to have followed did not exist at the time where he claimed to have followed the course. And I checked where the person was working at the university. He had never studied there. There was no record of him having studied there. He claimed that the records had been wiped by some security firm, but simply the course didn't even exist. So his story did not add up until you have seen proof, be it documents or contracts or passports which of course can also be faked. But until you have seen it, remember, you have not seen proof. And remember with this wording, I have not yet seen proof. It doesn't mean there is no proof. It simply means I have not seen it. And until I have seen it, how can I know it exists? By trusting someone who is a liar? And if someone else comes and says, but this information is true, then I can ask them all these questions. You know, have you seen proof or did you hear it? If you heard it, whom did you hear it from? And has that person seen proof? Until we know for sure that the person has seen proof and they can describe the proof, it is highly likely that simply it is more claims. Remember, the brain will often hear a claim, assume it is information, and just rest upon it, assuming it is solid and reliable. It isn't because we assume something to be true, that it was true, or that we ever saw proof for it. I've been racking my brains to remember a story. It was an anecdote about a band, and the person who told me the anecdote, I was certain that the person was telling the truth, but then it turned out the person was lying about many different things. And you'd wonder, why would you lie about something as unimportant as an anecdote about a band? Because the person was a pathological liar. They lied all the time about anything they could and made it much easier to suddenly pause and rethink, what else did the person tell me upon which I acted, assuming it was true, but it turned out that maybe it wasn't true. It turned out I fell out with friends because of these claims. It happened that I turned away from different opportunities because of things the person has said. And I had certain presuppositions about places and people and many other things because of things that these people had told me. I simply assumed that they were good faith actors and they were telling the truth. But this clearly was not the case. They were not good faith actors. They were not telling the truth. I simply had assumed that they were reliable. So one thing I suggest you do is write a list of different claims they have made that you believe. And simply next to each of them, add a question mark and try to figure out how can you know if this really is true or not. And if you're not sure, for each of these claims, just remember, you don't know if it is true or not.